AirGap's top five security trends for 2022. If you're running a mission critical OT or IT infrastructure, we have some very useful information for you. Please welcome our special guest, Mr. Ritesh Agarwal. He's the CEO of AirGap Networks and your cybersecurity auditor and host, Mr. Zach Heater. Take it away, fellas. Pretty good. So, hey, this week, uh, AirGap Network sent out a newsletter highlighting the top five OT cybersecurity risks for this upcoming year. You want to jump in and cover each of those? Yeah, I had the privilege to speak to hundreds of OT cyber leaders in the last year, and I learned a few key principles from them that they're all looking into and, and are concerned about. I thought it's a good idea to share that with the rest of the world and other OT leaders that may benefit from it. So one of them, like you said, was principle of least privilege. And the reason for that is this excessive access inside the OT organization, much like the IT organization, where once the attacker gets into the organization, they have free will to move east, west, and laterally. laterally. That's the fundamental reason behind majority of the cyber attacks. And the OT leaders rightfully are looking for a solution that can fundamentally the lateral threat movement and uh, we have a solution, perhaps the industry's only solution that is effective against lateral threat movement prevention. Next one, supply chain risk management. Yeah, much like IT industry, I think OT industry is not immune to supply chain either. As a matter of fact, they procure or routinely procure assets from third parties as part of their factories and plants and warehouses, etc. And usually there are hundreds, if not thousands of such third-party suppliers. Imagine then any of those uh, supplier gets compromised and any of those equipments or software that they're buying that gets compromised, as we have seen with SolarWind attack as well. These compromised assets could sit inside your OT environment and now can create havoc for you in terms of going east, west, and north, south. Therefore, supply chain risk management is become a primary concern for the OT cyber leaders as well, who want to make sure that the that the manufacturing plant or warehouses or healthcare facilities continue to operate at full scale during this pandemic and beyond. Uh, next one, patch management. Can you speak to that a bit? Absolutely, um, especially in the OT environment. And this is very important for our audience to understand. Um, the amount of updates and upgrades for an operating system is not at par with the IT industry, in the OT industry. For example, in the IT world, you're used to getting your laptops and your cell phones and other things upgraded pretty much as soon as the patch is available. And many of our audience members must be doing that for their cell phones. Uh, a new application comes in or a new version of the application comes in, they get it upgraded. Many of them have automated it. A uh, new version of the operating system comes in, they upgrade it. This is not true for the OT industry, uh, which, believe me or not, is running some vintage operating system. In many cases, Windows 95, Windows 2000, Windows XP, etc. Very difficult to keep up with the patch management on some of those tools. The other reason for OT to be behind in terms of patch management is because they don't, unlike IT environment, OT doesn't get planned downtime as frequently as the IT does. And it all creates a lot of challenges for the OT world. And so patch management is top priority for many of the cyber leaders to understand and ensure that they can keep up and and put the latest patch as, as quickly as they can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next one, this one's near and dear to my heart, uh, phishing and ransomware. See, ransomware has become a primary mode of cyber threats these days, especially because of the motivation of uh, making money. So we have also seen that during pandemic or during um, any stressful economic situation, there are more cyber attacks than, than not. Um, the cyber attackers are looking to make quick bucks because either they lost their job or they've been going through some economic distress. And we'll see more of ransomware as we go forward. Now, one of the primary mode of delivering ransomware is phishing. And all of us are equally vulnerable and it goes for OT industry as well. There are, unlike in the past, there are reasons for OT now to allow remote access to their environment. Um, in the past, OT industry relied on so-called air gapping their 
factories and their OT environments from the rest of the world, and that was their primary mode of security. But because of obviously pandemic and also to stay competitive with the industry, they're allowing access from OT world into the IT world, into the remote access world, et cetera. One of that, that is email access and the employees working from home and connected to OT as well as email, you suddenly create a conduit from a phishing to ransomware. And it's happening more often than not. So an effective measure is absolutely necessary. On top of it, like I said, you need to combine that with the privilege management, lateral threat movement prevention in order to get an effective solution that works for you. Um, last one, security configuration management. I have been in this industry for more than two decades, uh, Zach, and I can tell you, uh, and I have stories to tell anybody who's interested, I'd love to welcome them and, and have get in touch with me. My email is IO, and I'd love to spend some time. I have so many stories. I can tell you majority of the attacks come because of the configuration errors. And uh, I think the biggest vulnerability in the cyber industry, to be honest with you, in addition to lateral threat movement, is actually the configuration errors. Human errors, people don't know or don't understand how to configure some of the assets that they have, that they've procured. So ensuring that you have proper configuration and ensuring protection, even in case when you don't have proper configuration, are the two criteria that should be followed. And rightfully so, um, all of my conversations clearly suggested that this is top of the sort of mind for, for OT cyber security experts. Uh, what do you feel is missing from the typical approach to micro segmentation? Oh, wow, that's a very good question. Um, that was the genesis of AirGap. I started this company about three years ago, and my realization, uh, I used to run Juniper Network Security Business, especially focusing on data center and service provider sectors. And my moment of reckoning came from the fact that majority of the um, cyber attacks were one way or another linked to lateral threat movement. And I wanted to solve that problem. And I had seen there are some solutions available in the market at the time that were doing a decent job, but not a good enough job. And part of the reason is, if not all, majority of the solutions are based on agent deployments in endpoints. And you know, sometimes it's not possible to deploy agents. Sometimes it's not desirable to deploy agents. Sometimes it's not scalable to deploy agents. Um, and all of the above in many cases. I've seen the cyber leaders would prefer not to deploy an agent if that is an option. Unfortunately, the industry lacked that option. And that's what AirGap is all about. AirGap built a very credible segmentation works without deploying agents. That means it's applicable to your OT environment, it's applicable to your IT environment, it's applicable to your cloud, to your data center, to your factories, to your hospitals, to your corporate campuses or university campuses for that matter. Um, that's the beauty of AirGap solution that is addressing the, the gap that the industry was facing with respect to segmenting the network. How granular is the AirGap solution um, and how customizable are the uh, security policies? Yeah, one of the key factors of AirGap is to allow customers to get the granularity down to a single device or a single port protocol if necessary. And hence the notion of micro segmentation or nano segmentation, pico segmentation. People are using all kinds of words there. But the idea is to allow segmentation to the extent possible and practical. And that's what AirGap does. In the past, people have resorted to segmentation using VLAN, especially in the physical world, in the OT world for that matter. Um, using old school uh, switching constructs, for example, which is very hard to maintain and scale. People have resorted to using ACLs, um, which is, I wouldn't even think that the switching vendors would recommend that customers use ACLs for so-called segmentation purposes, because it's just impossible to. So not only we do granular segmentation down to the device level, but there are two main problems we solve for our customers. Number one, make is ridiculously easy to deploy air gap. And number two, make it super simple for them to write security policy using our autonomous policy management and policy advisor that uh, allows customer to take advantage of uh, industrial threat threats, correlation with their environment, automation of policy, uh, as well as uh, creation of those policies that we help customers with.
Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And first of all, per device granularity is very, very impressive. Um, you know, as a security myself, typically what I see the cha you know the challenges associated with that degree of granularity um, with the traditional approaches to micro segmentation that you mentioned is is just it becomes tremendously difficult to manage. So, with that in mind, um, can you speak a bit to how an agentless solution um, help helps um, you know kind of streamline that management? Yeah, policy management has been the holy grail of micro segmentation. And there are companies that have tried to make it simpler and have done an okay job, but I think there's a lot more to be done at a principal level. I think when I started this and when I started thinking about it along with my team, one of the key aspects that we had in mind was security solution should be practical. Um, going down the lane of I need to micro segment everything and write a policy down to every device is feasible, but uh, but it can be very daunting for usually a short staff uh, IT organization. So one of the approach AirGap has taken is to provide practicality of this solution where we will restrict on day one, week one, on month one, all of the <clears throat> known vulnerable protocols and ports that are applicable to the customer. So start with visibility, understand your environment, see what is vulnerable. We've already had customers that deployed air gap and within the first day, first hour in many cases, identified all of the rogue devices they have in the environment, identified the rogue protocols that are running like SMB v1. I could see on their in their eyes when I was actually sitting next to them, <clears throat> trying getting the platform up and running, I was like, no, we cannot have SMB one running in our organizations. Like these are the devices. And, and that was just eye opener for them. And they went ahead and addressed that very quickly. Then the third thing is, that is our, our sort of day one, to get the visibility. A day two is essentially provide control for those uh, vulnerabilities that exist in the environment. Do you have a BitTorrent protocol running inside the organization? Do you have RDP protocol running? Do you have any other vulnerable protocol running? Let's restrict it to certain devices that actually leverage this and reduce your attack surface dramatically. And then based on that learning, then day three, uh, in, in a sense, is to lock down the environment and provide tighter access control, east to west and north south. So that's the air gap approach that is following a practical journey for a customer without having to, to make it very difficult for them. And the final piece of it, which is very, very important, but equally important for us, is the idea of policy advisor. So air gap, has built tools and have put people that will monitor your environment once AirGap is deployed and look at <clears throat> all of the data that is flowing inside and identify what are the known vulnerabilities in that. And then indicate to you through our dashboard that there are certain policies that you should put in effect that would reduce your attack surface without impacting your business productivity. And that our customers are finding so useful because in absence of a very large SOC team, they have to essentially rely on their, their limited knowledge base and time base. AirGap just complements that and provides them that free advisor that allows them to reduce their tax surface and the risk uh, that they carry. So all in all, that's our approach. It's, it's built on practicality of micro-segmentation rather than ideology of micro-segmentation. Right. Um, okay, last question, um, and this is kind of a 50,000 foot view um, perspective. You know, we opened today covering the top five OT cybersecurity risk, risks for this upcoming year. Um, so with those risks in mind, how can the solutions provided by AirGap help organizations to mitigate risk and reduce the impact and severity of security incidents? Yeah, so there are three things that AirGap does best and better than anybody else, I bet you. Number one is we are the, the lack of better word, I would say only game in town that provides lateral threat movement prevention without installing agents for your OT environment, for your IT environment, for your data center, for across the board, essentially. It's a unified solution that is agentless, which is absolutely necessary. And as we discussed, couple that with our practical approach to policy management provides that comprehensive protection for our customers. The second, the IT and OT organization to understand the notion of identity-based access control. Today, if you're inside the organization, especially in OT environment, 
there are lots of legacy machines, servers, applications that you are allowed to access, and there is no modernization in terms of access control there. So once you're inside, you automatically have access to those assets, and you could be a bad actor, you could be an employee with a compromised laptop, you could be a contractor with uh, fewer privileges. Guess what? You have access to everything. Airgap automates a way for you to inject multi-factor authentication between any transaction that you choose, and we can make it completely dynamic. So the idea is, even if your one of your endpoint is compromised, we restrict east-west uh, movement. But even when the movement is authorized, we challenge multi-factor authentication, further reducing the attack surface and possibility of your possible vulnerable uh, endpoints being compromised. Third thing is, despite all your best attempt, like we discussed, if somebody misconfigured something and that resulted in in potential outbreak of an attack. Airgap is the only company that offers ransomware kill switch. And as the name suggests, ransomware kill switch, think of this as a button. This is a get out of jail card. This is a emergency shut off wall for you, where a button on your desk would essentially either completely stop the propagation of ransomware or dramatically slow it down, giving you time to react and prevent your house from getting burnt down. Your attack surface is going to be limited. Your blast radius, so to speak, will be very limited. So those three things, making sure that lateral threat movement is prevented, making sure that there is identity-based access control, and giving our customers, each of them, a ransomware kill switch so that in case if there is an outbreak, you will have reduced attack surface. Are there those three things that AirGap does to help the OT as well as IT organization? That background is you know, tremendously appreciated, so thank you very much. Um, last thing, you know, if, if any of the viewers here want to learn more about your products, where can they go? There are many ways they can reach out to us. Uh, obviously, they can visit us at our website, which is https airgap.io, airgap.io. Uh, they can reach out to me at ritesh at airgap.io, R-I-T-E-S-H, which is my first name, at airgap.io. We can also be found on LinkedIn. <clears throat> we can also be found on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and other social media channels. We welcome our customers, our prospects, and even industry experts, as well as analysts and auditors like yourself, to, to contact us. I, I always love to get uh, get more into the technical details and describe the value proposition that we have. Okay, perfect. Hey, Ritesh, thanks for your time today. Zach, it's been a pleasure. Look forward to doing this again with you.